Welcome back, everybody. One of your favorites. No one. Well, I think some people. I think there's maybe like four people watching. No one really double heart loves to clean. Some people like it, but well, and especially when it comes to cleaning those annoying things around your house, like tile grout, the microwave. Especially when you have a rude guest that makes food and then leaves the crusty crust in there. And no one likes to clean the oven door. But there are ways to make that job a little easier. Here with some DIY ways to do that. Ladies and gentlemen from Lemons, Lavender, and Laundry, our good friend Aaron Meyer. Hello, Aaron. Oh, hello. Because it's true. No one loves, I mean, I, I don't. Do I don't think anyone likes to clean. Do I they? think people. Well, I think people like individual. Like, it, what's your favorite cleaning thing to do? None. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you just disproved um, my point. Like, I love to vacuum because I like to see progress. The, the lines. Yes, the I like to lines. see that, and yeah, then I get okay. mad when people walk okay. on them. But yeah. Okay. okay. So let's talk about the first problem. All right. So here. the first thing we're gonna do is grout. So this is actually there okay. There we perfect. Go. Um. One of the most common questions I get asked is about grout and stainless steel. So we'll cover both of them. So grout, as you know, it's kind of textured and yes. it tends to get disgusting Gross. after a while. So all you need is baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. That's it. And a toothbrush, but not your own. Don't use your own. Yeah. So um, I already have. Don't you love that we have to? We we physically have to say that because someone will be like, you know, I used my toothbrush and it just didn't work. Yeah. Would it whiten your teeth though? It might. Isn't that yeah, what's but don't in do it, please. No, don't yeah, do it. Yeah, don't do it yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay. So I've got some baking soda already in here. Okay. I'm gonna have you start drizzling in some hydrogen peroxide. Do you trust me with this? Yeah, okay. I do. I think it'll be okay. Okay. So you're basically gonna form a paste. You can you can real go go go. Like paste, that. paste. paste? Okay, yeah. There we so go. more 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 more. more. Okay. okay. There there we're getting there. Okay. You can stop now. Okay. All right. So you're going to form a paste with this. And if you notice it's kind of dry, add a little more baking soda. If you notice it's too wet, oh. I said that opposite. Yeah. If it's too <laughs> too dry, add more hydrogen peroxide. Too wet, add a little more baking soda. And what you're going to do is take the toothbrush. You're going to use this kind of paste. We have it a little thin, but you're going to scrub it on the grout lines, look and at, it will completely whiten and brighten them. So we have a we, picture. Yeah. We have a before. So, so you can before. see the left side is just disgusting, and then the right side is what I use the hydrogen peroxide and uh, baking that's, soda. And that's hard, especially if it's. If it's caked on stuff, yeah, it's really hard to get off. And that, what is this? Co collectively, fifty cents, maybe? Oh, I don't even think that much. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, and it it's really easy too. It, it's not like a super hard scrub that you have to do. So. Okay. Next, All right. what's the next problem we're tackling? Next is our oven door, which I don't know about you, but I ignored mine for about for like seven years because I, don't think, I yeah. it's not something you think about because no. it's closed. Yes. So mine is really disgusting, and in the before and after, I'm embarrassed. But let's just pretend it's not that thank bad. You for, but thank you for showing it for our show. I yeah, appreciate you're welcome. that. Yeah. I always feel like the worse the before, the better the after. Yes. Looks, you know. So. And, the, and then people are like, "Aaron's really good." Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, this yeah. like really works. Okay. So all you need is baking soda and water for this one. Okay. You're gonna heap on a bunch of baking soda onto the oven door, and don't be shy. You really need a lot. You're gonna wet it down. You can do it with a spray bottle, or you can just really wet down your scour pad. Okay. If you're concerned. Concerned about it scratching Scratching. your glass, there are non scratch scour pads as well. And you basically, I mean, this takes a little bit more elbow grease, but you literally just scrub and it, everything will completely come off. Okay, let's look at the before and after. The, the left is Aaron's. See why oh. I said I was so embarrassed right there before? Aaron. Oh, but look at how good that after looks. Way better, right? Wow. Yeah, baking soda and water. That's well, it. That was like so what? no like been, toxic fumes or it's anything. It's been there since like what 98, 99. It's been it like might that? have been. Well, the house was built in 2002, I think. So probably about that long. I had a girl. Ah. I'm loving that. Okay. <laughs> All What's right. What's next? Stainless steel. This is another one that I get asked mm. about a lot because, as you know, stainless steel is gets the smudges and yeah. the fingerprints. Okay. It's pretty, but it's hard to maintain. It is. So the best thing to do is grab a microfiber cloth. This one's actually made for stainless. Stainless steel. I don't really know if you have to have it for that, but that's what I use. Can I feel it? Wet it see. Yeah. Okay. Wet it down. Oh. Scrub your like always when you're working with stainless steel, go with the grain of the steel. Okay. Now, for some of my stainless steel, that's all I have to do, and it seems to do good. You just dry it off with like a flour sack cloth. But if you still are noticing smudges and fingerprints, grab some olive oil. 
put it on to, I use just old flour sack cloths that have, like mine has holes in it and everything. I, I love, then, nothing dries dishes better. Yes, this I is what I use my, yeah, always. Yeah. And so you just are gonna, again, go with the grain with the olive oil and then kind of buff it off with a dry section. And Seriously? it totally, it will, and it also helps to pre, um, prevent the fingerprints and smudges from coming back as quickly. Let's see the before and after, Leo. Let's go ahead and put that up. Oh, nice. Okay. See? Yeah. Now, see, that doesn't look quite as dirty as your oven. So no. That, no, I like no, that. No, that was a newer appliance. Oh, so see? That's probably okay. why. Last so, but not least. Last but not least, so if you've got the microwave or like a range hood above yeah. your oven and it gets the splatters from stir fries or whatever, and then it seems to attract the dust because it gets sticky. Yes. And it's if you ever tried to wipe it with water or even if you add dish soap to it, it smears, smears. it. And it's like a gray smear, yeah. which looks worse. Grab some um, lemon essential oil, put it on a cotton ball, like five drops, and I'm not kidding, it will magically just erase the grease. It's what? incredible. And it it's like no effort at all. You just just kind just of just essential it oil on a That's cotton it. ball. And you'll notice like citrus oils are a lot of times in cleaning products, like yeah. lemon or orange. I've tried it with orange, but I think lemon works better. Um, but Seriously. totally will take it off. See? I swore that we would never talk. Oh, here's before and after. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Yeah. So you can wow. kind of see the dust. Yeah. Oh, Aaron, that's crazy. I know. See, I swore that we would never talk about essential oils on the show because we always get emails, but this is good. Yeah. We do. See? You do know that we get every time we mention essential oils, we have to shut down our email server. Are you serious? Yeah, it's crazy. That and cat. Welcome back, everybody. Back with our good friend Aaron Meyer from La Lemons and Lavender and Laundry. Well, we have a lot of questions about basic room, basic room makeovers because you have seen on our show many times. Aaron has done the one hundred dollar room makeovers, right. and people have loved those. So you have now just decorating tips uh, on not a budget, but a lot of the stuff you can do fairly cheap. We should say yes. Well, so what a lot of people don't realize when, as you're making over a room with only $100, you have to start figuring out how to get some stuff for cheap and free. So um, over the years, these are some of the things that I've learned. Number one is go to your local recycle center. They have free paint. And so I painted, we've painted our master bedroom. We painted our living room with absolutely for free. And then, like, just in what? my son's room, yeah, like, all of that, that's all free paint at the Recycle Center. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm not kidding. I, I saw this on a little card here. I have never heard of that ever. Yeah, and if you live in a place where there's, like, a lot of new builds, painters that are using, like, great neutral colors will drop their five-gallon buckets off, and it'll be, like, two-thirds full. And you can go grab it for free and put it in your car, and you can take it and use it to paint. We I did just, not know that. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah, we just did my son's room and we did a Nerf gun wall and he's 12. So we did lime green background on the pegboard and I got that paint for free as well. You, it's a hit or miss though. But you can also check the oops section of a hardware store that has paint or um, you can always color match at your hardware store. It's about half the price of like a name brand paint. Next, so. free or discounted wood? Yes, so for um, shelving and things like that, you can go to your local hardware store. So these are shelves that we did in our master bathroom. The wood cost me $1.10. So all you have to do is go to, if you've got a lumber section in your hardware store, go to the back and there's typically a cart with, okay, so if you don't know this, if you are afraid of a table saw and you don't want to cut your own wood, you can bring Guilty. your measurements in and they will cut it for you to whatever measurement you want. Then there's leftover pieces from all those people's cuts or sometimes it's split in a certain spot. They'll discount it 70% and you can go and just, if they're super cheap pieces of wood. Otherwise, check like your Facebook marketplace. Lots of people are giving away pallets or they've got a stack of wood in their garage that they don't want to take care of, so they'll just give it away for free. This is fantastic. We are learning a lot today. Okay, <laughs> now let's move to wall decor. And this is your tip for inexpensive wall decor. Yes, so the first place I always go for wall decor is Pinterest. If you go look up free printables and then whatever you're looking for, if you want florals or you want 
Um, my son's room, I think we might have a picture of it. We, we did. Picture. Yep. So those two pictures above, those are um, vintage blueprints of football, like a football and a football helmet or something. And so I just printed those off at home and then framed them. Um, and so you can find things like that on Pinterest. But if can we you talk about that card catalog for a second, that is awesome. Ah, I redid that. That. I mean, look, I'm all about your pictures, but I'm just saying. Those Stop are the presses. Those are for his baseball and football cards. He has so many of them that I was like, how do I store these? So I took that and I painted the card catalog. I left the front as is. We made a top and then I got some hairpin legs off Amazon for 25 bucks off the bottom. This was my last $100 room challenge. I did my son's room. So that is fantastic. Really quick, yeah. we have just a few seconds. Your next rule use what you have. So I think a lot of people don't realize that they have tons of stuff already in their house. So one of the cheapest things to do is move. Like if you need a little table and you think, oh, that one has been sitting in the corner of our bedroom unused, you can move it. Move wall decor around, move your furniture around, mm -hmm. try things. And a lot of us have stashes down in the basement of things that we're just not sure what to do with. So go shop your house first before you go buy new. And then go to Crate and Barrel. Give it up for Erin Meyer, everybody. For more information on everything Erin talked about this morning, head to her website, Lemons Lavender and Laundry. And again, you know this, we'll be posting these segments on our Facebook page a little bit later. Search for Jason Show TV.